first piece was uh, was actually the last scene to be shot the first day of shooting, and it was uh, Coach Dale on his way to Hickory, and he uh, is almost there, but stops to get gas, and he ends up uh, chatting with the fellow that's pumping the gas, and it turns out he's the local high school basketball coach for that small town, uh, for their small town, and uh, that story had been a bit more expansive, but it kept getting pared down, and uh, when you, the first sectional game, when one of our players goes into the trophy case, uh, it's the opposing coach who's in Hackman's face yelling and screaming at him. That's who this guy is. the basketball team. Coach of the basketball team. You wouldn't be pulling a slicker on me now, would you? Ah, I guess you ain't the slicker in kind. My old Cletus, where are you in from? Well, I heard they were in trouble down there. I didn't know they were desperate. 95. Keep the change. Wide. Hey, friend, keep a tight chain on your end gate now. This scene was actually redundant. If we had, if we were doing our job properly, uh, we would be saying the same thing uh, over and over again about how important basketball was to the people in Indiana. Uh, it comes out in many different ways throughout the film, and uh, it's it's a nice little moment. But uh, shoe leather, as they say in the business. You know, we give them a good old-fashioned four-hour education here. It's the best kind. Four-hour? Yeah, reading, writing, arithmetic, and round ball. I guess this is a far cry from Norfolk, Virginia, huh? More than just miles. <laughs> this small town life may be just your bacon. You know, there's an awful lot of good folks around here. Of course, basketball makes them all crazy. But as long as you're winning, they're going to be sweet on you. Well, that's true anywhere. Well, high school basketball here in Indiana. Ain't anywhere. I'll tell you that. So the famous uh, dinner at Cletus uh, before they go to meet the. Uh, I guess that that was. Uh, I guess partially put in because of uh, not taken out, but originally written. Uh, so that we could find out that he was married, that he did have uh, uh, somewhat of a, a life before he came to Hickory, um, and about how much the the former coach, who had coached there for a few decades, uh, how much it meant to those people. Mm -hmm. oh, this is the best chicken stew, really. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, rabbit. It was good though, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Are you married, North? What? Are you married? Uh, <laughs> no, no, 
not. <laughs> Why not? Look at her. Well, not, I was married uh, in my twenties, but I was divorced, and and I'm still looking. Hmm. <laughs> do you go out on dates? Sometimes. When you do go out, where'd you go? Well, did you go to movie houses? Yep. It's probably best for you, though, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I figured. You know, the nearest one from here is in Deer Lake, and that's about 20 miles away. I get to go maybe once a year if I'm lucky. Oh, the winter. Yeah, oh, like, more than that. That. that is oh. all. That is all. You know it. Say, have you ever seen a television? Mm-hmm. Well, our cousins, they just bought one. Loretta, leave wanted... them in peace. Can we go over there, Mom? Hush now. Isn't it about time you boys be getting to the meeting? What meeting is that? Oh, it's a little reception. Some of the boys are itching to meet you. Mm. Truth is, there's a lot of hollering about Cletus bringing you in. James Ted rest his soul put in 22 good years. I don't reckon most folks sorry anybody's taking his place. And I'm the anybody that they got. <laughs> Trust me, it'll be painless. Well, the harvest scene may be my favorite scene in the movie. It certainly was the, the scene I missed the most. And originally that was conceived and designed to show what these people did, you know, what their daily life was about, and that was farming. Um, we wanted to see the community working together, not just coming together for the basketball game at the end, but how they managed their their day to day lives. Thirty six of the thirty nine days it rained. This was one of the most picture perfect autumn days I've ever seen. Well, that we saw during our stay in Indiana while we were shooting. The Oh, boy. <laughs> I thought they had machines for this kind of stuff. Well, you thought right, huh? It's one of those old mules trying to keep threshing days alive. What for? It's well, like the way things been. Afraid of what they could be. Not tradition, huh? Well, it's more than that. Farm has not changed much in a hundred years. Just the war make your head spin. A big four-row corn pickers and chuckers just... Sir, man's own land manipulating reach. 
our little 100-acre farm is all of a sudden too small, too inefficient. See out there? 50 men got down to only eight acres, tops. Machine's coming in tomorrow. It's getting cold. Seems like yesterday. Walking through the fields, you could hear the corn snap and rustle as it grew. With this story, the movie can hold up without it. I, I thought that it really lent a moment where he loses his temper. And there's no other scene in the movie where he lo loses his temper. Yeah, and that's this, part of his background. This comes closer to showing you where he came from and, and weak that point. volatile personality that, that got him in trouble in the past. And the tension that is created uh, by the person who brought him in and the potential danger uh, of him carrying on in this way. And of course, it's one more scene between Myra Fleener and Norman Dale, which we wished we had to create kind of a, 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 a broader sweep of that storyline. I don't understand it. What the hell is going on here? How in the hell could somebody transfer two months into the school term to play basketball in another school, huh? What kind of hillbilly rule is that anyway? Hillbilly? A hillbilly, Mr. Dale? Would you excuse us, please, Miss Fleener? Don't you have a class to teach? Us. Look, if it goes on like this, I won't even have a team to field. If you go on like this, you won't be around long enough for it to matter. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe some of those can't be cured. Well, under the circumstances, I just... Look, I didn't promise you a bed of lilies. Only a chance. From where I said, it looks like you're about to run out of them. teach your kids. choice alone, I wouldn't be there, but uh, my mother, she hasn't missed a game in 30 years, so that's where I'm going to go. You just came to wish me good luck, huh? Is <laughs> luck what you're counting on? Oh, I'll take all the luck I can get. No, I came here because I wanted to tell you that I think you handled the situation today quite well, and that's why I came. I see. You just came to uh, compliment me, huh? <laughs> I'll take it. It's a real chestnut. Coming from you. Uh, there's an Alan Ladd movie playing about a half an hour away. Would you like to go tomorrow? I guess that means no. <laughs> this is the most ask about <laughs> scene and whatever happened to Buddy. First of all, is thrown off the team, then all of a sudden magically appears. But I mean, it's true, wherever we've gone, either together or alone, and opened it up to questions, if we're talking about this movie, it's always one of the first ones asked. How did Buddy get back on the team? This was actually the last scene to be cut. This is what got us under two hours, I believe. And we fought for it. We, we felt that everybody would notice that uh, Buddy just appeared magically on the team. And they did. And, and yet uh, the powers that be said, we don't care. We only want a film that's less than two hours. Keep the company. Say he's doing. Good book. Yeah. 
Didn't look like you want to talk much, huh? Well, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll just leave. But later on, okay? I'll come back. Yeah, okay. You're not leaving town, are you, Norm? Not unless I'm forced to. <laughs> Which could happen at any time. Yeah. Guess Hickory's not like you thought it'd be, huh? Well, I guess it's not quite what I imagined. What are you doing here, buddy? I thought I told you not to come around. I'm here to see you. I went and talked to traders. How was the game? I don't know. Didn't you play? I couldn't. I went there and and I got dressed and all, and we had to go out on the floor. I just couldn't do it. I've been shooting baskets for Hickory since the first grade. Just don't seem right in my gut to, to be a tiger in my last year. A team we've been trying to beat forever. I was hoping that... If it's all right with Cletus, it's fine with me. Just remember, your second chance is the last chance you're allowed. We had to truncate the relationship story between um, Norman Dale and Myra Fleener. Uh, and it's unfortunate, I think, because some people are thrown off by the kiss that happens at the end. And, and if we had had all these scenes in there, I think there would have been a more natural evolution of that relationship where it would have been more organic and make sense. Yeah, and I, I, uh, I know Barbara wasn't too happy with uh, all these scenes missing, but neither were we, believe me. I wish. Uh, you know, we've been able to keep them in, but uh, because she's she's terrific. I mean, she's wonderful, and we. It's I, I feel like uh, audience really got cheated and robbed a bit, but uh, that was not our doing. Single handed won the sectionals. Frank ran thirty three, and he played good ball at Franklin College too. Hmm? Came started a butchering business. Good with the hogs, <laughs> bad with a bow. Now you pull this game out Friday night. <laughs> It'd be a giant right step toward where you gotta go. Mother, it's getting late. Seven o'clock? We have work to do. Oh, now it's we. She's speaking for you, Norman. <laughs> no, it's a wonder you two don't hit it off better. She doesn't think much of life around here either. It doesn't have enough spine to get out. Had a bad experience in the big city. Mother! A years and came running this home is to not Mama. His business. The problem is, Mama doesn't want her around waiting on her all the time, like she was in some nursing home. She's sure I'd just fall apart if she weren't here to take Thank care of me. Thank you, Mother, and good night. <clears throat> uh, that's a scene that provides some backstory uh, to the shooter character in terms of his addiction. And um, the, the, whole, the comment about uh, what's really important is that we be a really tough team to play against is one of the lines I used to hear Bob Knight say over and over again. That's where I got that line. Listen, guys, if you develop into a team that's tough, that's, that's tough to play against, 
If you can do that, we're going to win our share of games. All right, take a shower. Everett. Where's your father? I don't know. He usually contacts me a day before the game. Yeah. Has there been a time recently when he's been off the bottom? He was sober for one summer about four years back. Didn't last. This scene uh, that shows the team waiting uh, out in the vestibule and and being dressed down by the girls for being gutless wonders is uh, that that was that was one of the uh, tough ones for me to lose. Um the reason that I finally justified it in my own head about getting rid of the scene is it's inconsistent in one way. That um, every scene uh, in the entire movie is told from the point of view of Gene Ackman. And we wanted to, to really see it through his eyes. So it didn't quite fit if you want to keep the, uh, the POV um, consistent. That's not slips of paper. Can't believe it. All this time, we've been sharing our hearts out for a bunch of gutless yellow belly wing suckers. Not hard enough. If you guys just go in there as a team and talk to them and let them know how you feel, it's okay. got to count for something. Okay. I'll go in if no one else will. I'll go in with you, Merle. Great. Let's do it. Ollie. I'm in. Didn't he? I don't understand why. I don't understand. 